Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're taking a look at the Tier 9 Premium American Battleship Georgia. We are on the map Sea of Fortune. The build is on the screen. It is a typical American class battleship build. And the Georgia is using the Iowa class hull. It has great speed, you know, the maneuverability, the armor angles, everything that you expect for the Iowa, it's there. Even the loadout is very similar with its consumables. Where it is not similar to the Iowa is its gun caliber. It is using six 457 millimeter guns. These are giant gun calibers, but they're not 460 like the Musashi, that's at tier nine, or the Amato, that's at tier 10. And six guns is a anemic amount. What have they done for compensation, you might ask? Well, they've designed the guns to use the Graf Spie formula. So it's sitting somewhere in between cruiser and battleship accuracy. They've used this formula before on other ships, namely the one I'm firing at, the Stalingrad, and you know how that went. So it is a formula that is very easy to make a little bit too accurate. But with only six guns, does it ever actually feel accurate? Well, not initially. So we spawned on the west side of the map. I decided, okay, I'm going to try and assist my teammates by pushing forward. Obviously, we have an aircraft carrier, and testing with an aircraft carrier is important. Since this is an Iowa-class battleship, it does reach the 33-34 knot threshold, and that is a very fast battleship now. Of course, the French can go faster under speed boost, but at base speed, this sucker is going to get into a fight fast. And initially, when we were playing this on stream, people were talking about, okay, it has some accuracy similar to the Soviet battleships and all that stuff. The accuracy is similar to the Graf Spie. That, that's what people were noticing, that the it just has uncanny accuracy for a battleship. And that's because of, obviously, it's using a unique formula. But over on this flank, we're trying our long-range shots. And, eh, you know, it's mediocre, uh, maybe even below average at uh, 17, 18 kilometers to 21 kilometers, which is the maximum gun range on the ship. It does appear that you do have to sacrifice gun range for the Graf Spie level accuracy. And, you know, at this stage, I was thinking, it's not really worth that. But as I was moving up, I am getting more and more and more side on the enemy Stalingrad, who is attempting to bow tank the western flank. And yes, I'm sure you can bow tank one, two, three, but look at my team. I think every single ship on my side decided to sail over to, to A point. I don't understand that play. I'm kind of disappointed in it, but what can we do to try and transition it to another successful moment? Uh, I was looking at this and I was like, okay, we got the Stalingrad, obviously. I'm behind islands. This is free firing. Don't really have to worry too much. Oh, man. Only four guns. Did you see that dispersion? It's just... It's not good enough at long range. You cannot reliably play this ship and enjoy your experience if you're only playing exclusively long range. You've got to get closer. And how can I get closer and help my team. Well, there's a lot of enemies in at B, and this Hakuda is trying to AP bomb me, and I'm just trying to not get AP bombed. I do have multiple friendlies who are helping. See all these aircraft that are just falling harmlessly to the to the water. It's just like raining aircraft. But we've got to make a play. And I just don't know that continuing towards the North Carolina, the Stalingrad is that play. But as we look inward towards B point, Note the Cleveland, and he's rocking the all-American camo. He's glorious, but I would love to use this all-American gun caliber to knock him out completely, and we don't find the Citadel. Unfortunate. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of smoke over there. A lot of smoke. And I gotta deal with all that smoke. And the best way to deal with all that smoke is to attempt to continuously fire on these targets as they try and use it to their advantage against other teammates. I mean, if I if I have a side shot or any stationary target, I'm totally gonna take it. 
and got pretty good grouping there. Um, that is definitely more accurate than the engagements on the Stalingrad, and the difference is only two, three kilometers. Maybe it just was a lucky roll. Uh, regardless, though, we're, we're doing okay. I'm just hanging out over here, firing on targets that can't see me. Most of my teammates are attempting to hold the A-B line. Don't know how effective that's actually going. Uh, from my point of view, I'm, I'm not taking any damage, but I'm not really dishing enough out that I'm really happy for it. So I, I, I really do make the decision, okay, we're not as effective as we could be. How can we get more effective? Well, there's a monarch. That Stalingrad looks like he's off the flank. There might be a North Carolina still on this flank. And I might have to deal with aircraft. But I need to try and keep the pressure on these enemies that are in at B. They have chosen to aggressively move forward. And because of that, they're going to be overextended a little bit. Oh, yeah. Just trying to make sure that everything's working just fine. I had some weird audio glitch. I, every patch has its own quirks. And I, I was just confirming. Is that what I'm hearing? You know? But it, it's okay. Enemy Monarch looks like he's going to angle a little bit too much. And I should be able to pin. I am keeping in mind the island. Trying to block any paths that could be an attack path against my ship. And... You know, the gun accuracy, not too bad. Not too bad at this range. And that's because of the Graf Spee and its cruiser battleship hybrid accuracy algorithm. And this North Carolina, I was like, what is this North Carolina's problem? He's firing on me at like max range. But the Monarch finally taken out. The island is blocking the North Carolina. And I've got multiple enemies in the center of the map. I'm going to go for it. I am absolutely going to go for this. So, we've got a couple DDs. Looks like friendlies do have a clear shot on the DDs. I don't have to worry about that. I note that there's a Cleveland sort of stationary in the back. He's trying to line of sight, but he's visible. So, what is he line of sighting, really? And uh, just a little bit too high. That's okay. Keep in mind, yes, the North Carolina, his guns are pointed inward, and I will have to deal with it, I'm sure. We lose our first friendly, though. It's a friendly Moskva, and we got continuously multiple friendlies that are holding that line, as there's DDs and other ships that are attempting to move into different positions to camp behind islands. This enemy Rune's doing the same thing, but I've got his flank. It's really important that, you know, ships try and keep a crossfire. And that's what I ended up being for this position. And because of that, I was like, okay, let's just get in there. Let's fight him out. I, I think I got the guns for this. The accuracy is definitely cool up close. It's over a long range where it's like, ah, uh, you know, the six guns, you really feel it. But, you know, honestly, the six guns in probably like 13 kilometers and below, maybe 14. And uh, playing through this, though, I was like, man... I was envious for the Gneisen now. I just felt like this is the kind of accuracy that six guns should have because six guns don't have accuracy at all. So they have to have some unique modifier in order for it to work. And using the Graf Spee... Oh, oh, oh! Cleveland, you're showing a lot of side. You're showing a lot of side. Trying to traverse the turrets. Of course, the Cleveland returns fire with his... I think he's using Admiral Halsey. But he's returning fire with high explosive... And, you know, I've got multiple enemies, the Rune, the Stalingrad, the Haku, the Zal. I want my teammates to take advantage of this sort of tip of the spear situation where I'm moving into B-point, trying to absorb all the shells so that they can better fight off. Because, I've, I've, you know, I haven't taken that much damage. And, you know, the guns at this range work very well. So I was just looking for a possible target that I could punish. And this Cleveland is overextending his angle. But we weren't able to reach the Citadel. Unfortunately. And, man, I just keep looking at the Stalingrad like, is he really still alive? Why is he still alive? Is he really still alive? <laughs> you know, you look at a target that's like a thousand or two thousand life, and you're going, do I have to do it for my team? This enemy Zal looks like he might be vulnerable to a shot. 
I do decide to fire on the Zhao because my guns were already angled that way. And he was broadside. And we get a nice citadel. That's pretty good. Don't have any issue with that kind of accuracy at that range. Um, but we need to, you know, make plays in the friendly. He's kind of trying to help, but he's also denying line of sight. And I finally, you know, the Stalingrad is still alive, really? Okay, we'll fire on him. And what do you think just happened? Friendly also fired on him and killed him, you know, half a second before my shells reached. So I should have just pulled the trigger and killed him. It's so annoying that you've got to do things like that. You have to do basic maintenance for your team because most players don't really pay that much attention to stuff like that. But we got the Cleveland. He's out in the open. Friendlies are firing on him. I'm trying to finish him off. We do get the dispersion. It does work out. And we capture B-Point. So, you know, it it's really worked out very well once I started getting a little bit closer. The 21 to 15 kilometers are a little rough with six guns. But the formula, it definitely works to make the Georgia feel better accuracy-wise. However, 457s cannot overmatch 32 millimeters of armor. So what's the point of having a slower, fewer... Less consistent, accurate ship. Where, yeah, sure, at close range, I do have the accuracy that maybe a Montana doesn't, but the Montana also has twice the amount of guns, and it's a tier 9 versus a tier 10. Six guns is just a really big issue, and I don't necessarily feel like the ship itself is performing good enough for the six guns to be overlooked. I just... Why would I choose to subtract that kind of gun systems from my battleships at high tier when the competition is so fierce? I don't know that I would. And if we're comparing tier 9 premiums, this could compare directly with the Missouri, which, you know, 9, 406, it does have the speed, it does have radar, it doesn't have the consistent accuracy of 6 guns, but it has consistent accuracy of 9 guns, they effectively have the same feeling. So I, I just, it's different, but I don't know that it's different in the best ways possible. And that's still my feeling on it. I definitely felt like the accuracy was above what I was expecting, but it's still only six guns. Even with every single gun hitting the target, it's still only six. And, you know, every ship line has proven you can't give up that amount of guns at high tier competitively. You're just giving up too much at that point. And that's my real concern. You know, the AA's above average, obviously, it's American. Uh, its Citadel is well protected. It has great speed. It has a eh, pretty average maneuverability, maybe below average maneuverability. It's an Iowa class battleship with big guns that can't overmatch. It's cool, but it's not it's not what I'm looking for in a battleship. I, I definitely want to play more of it, and I'm definitely impressed by the keen system accuracy, but even if I had this kind of accuracy on my Gneisen now, I would still probably choose the Seanhurst. The more guns you have gives you a higher chance of doing something against the target. You know, a couple of those salvos, I literally missed every single shell. Not a single one dispersed into the target, and I was left just holding my hands in disappointment, especially bow tanking. Four guns, that's it? That's it? Ugh. But it was cool. It was it was a it was a, a pleasant experience. I liked being the tip of the spear, pushing forward with my team, but that's more to do with the game itself. We got three kills, one hundred and twenty five thousand damage done, two thousand one hundred and eighty four base XP. I think it works. I think it works pretty well, but I think there are probably premium tier nines that work a little bit better. So I hope you enjoyed this first impression. We'll see where it goes. Share your thoughts in the comments on the Georgia so far. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.